Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're working on an Avalanche by Keystone, fifth wheel. We are putting uh, 1600 watts on the solar minimum. We might add more. Four SOK batteries for a little over 800 amp hours of battery. It's gonna be a 12 volt system, 3000 multi plus, uh, two charge controllers, and I'm gonna show you how we do it all. Stick around. All right, look at this beast. Now, for some of you who have been along for the ride for a long time, you're gonna say, Sean, <laughs> Sean, what are we doing outside? We got this giant shop here. What are we doing? Well, let me show you why we're gonna be working outside, not inside. For as large and amazing as this space is, I gotta take down that half of that loft area before we're gonna be able to do that. Uh, I also need to get that lift out of here eventually. It's just what's most important and urgent at the time. And that so far has not been urgent enough. We will get to it soon. Because while the weather is nice and mild right now, in the state of Minnesota, it does get hot and miserable. And I don't want to be working on, I've paid my dues, paid my dues. So is JD. And uh, if you don't know, JD works with us in the summers. He's down in Arizona. I think he's wrapping up about his last install there. And then he'll be up with us, uh, hopefully sometime this spring. Anyway, let's get back to how we're going to install everything on this Keystone Avalanche. If you followed how solar installs typically go in fifth wheels, this compartment is a great way to go. And that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna mount a uh, three quarter inch thick piece of plywood to this, cover it in carpet so it looks just like that. And then assemble all that in our shop, but put it here and that's kind of the multi plus solar chargers, everything there. And then we're gonna put the batteries down here and I'm gonna try and cover those up so this space stays usable for the customer. But we gotta do more than that. Some people also put it in here and this is not also not a bad way to go. Um, but all we're really looking for in here is, I think, uh, let's zoom in here a little bit more. See that, uh, that one right there? That's the gray tank line. And you can tell that because the gray tank goes into it from the shower, or the shower drain goes into it. So I'm pretty sure that's the gray tank line. We're going to use that for our solar wires to come through. And then uh, the main breaker panel is right over here. So those connections are going to come here along the ceiling and back through here on the back side of that bay. And we'll also run some uh, data cables for, you guessed it, a Serbo GX display. And this one, we're going a little bigger. We're going for the seven inch. I think we're going to put it right here. I think it's a great place to put it. As you see, I've kind of ripped everything apart a little bit because one of the things I like to do before I just dive into something is to try and create a plan on how we're going to do it. I want to know as many of the challenges as I can because there's always challenges I don't know about that are going to come up during it. So <laughs> trying to eliminate as many of those as possible. So uh, just walking through the process of how we do that and uh, also how we would do it for you, which is a great segue into uh, what we do here at Soda Solar is... We install solar, battery systems, inverter systems into RVs, uh, ice houses, trailers, pretty much anything you can think of. Class A's, people have been asking us lately, do you work on class A's? Of course we do. Just a lot more fifth wheels out there, so that's what we do a little bit more of. Pretty much anything you need, 120 volt power, or even 240, without having to run a generator, we can help you out, and we'd love to do that. <sighs> so, enough about that. While it is nice out here, and I would love to be spending some time out here. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get to work on our putting together that board we talked about, and I'll show you all the components that we have inside. I have to say, I continually feel so spoiled and lucky that I get this space to work in now. I used to be working in just a tiny two-stall garage trying to make this work, and uh, we had a lot of fun doing it, don't get me wrong, but I'm enjoying this right now. Okay. So, got the MultiPlus 3000 2 by 120 and uh, if you don't know, what's important about that is 50 amp power can come into it. It still only inverts 120, but the 50 amp comes in, passes through it if you're on shore power, so as if it's not even there. But when you are on 
Inverter power, what it does is it joins the two hot legs together, just like a 30 amp adapter might. And so all of your outlets work, everything works, other than you can't run two air conditioners. I mean, with soft starts, you can actually start them up. I would not recommend it for very long, but it is possible. All right, enough about that guy. Uh, Link's distributor, this is really important. It's a nice bus bar system, keeps everything protected and uh, the power managed very nicely. And we always do them upside down or many times we do them upside down. There's a label that will flip this around for us so then we can read it because we are a little OCD just like you. Uh, we've got our smart solars 150 by 70s here. That will allow us to have a little bit of headroom. We may try and get those more panels like we talked about up there. Uh, we're doing raceway everywhere. We've got the smart shunt. That's what we're using to measure our battery. And then here is what we're doing for the circuit protection and disconnect. These have really nice contacts in here and really nice connections. And so far it seems to hold up to heat long term, actually being able to do two or maybe even 300 amps through this continuously without a problem. If you need even more assurance, let me show you something. Check this thing out. This is also 400 amps, but <laughs> look at the size on this. This, this is my hand, I'm like a normal adult man. I, I can't disengage, oh, oh. Oh my, did you hear that? That is how you switch that on and off. This is how this one goes. This is doable. This, I would imagine you could run up to probably darn near that 400 amps consistently all the time without a problem. Uh, this is crazy. So uh, we're not installing this one. This one will do us just fine. It's got nearly the same uh, safety ratings. This one just has a little more thermal overhead for those really high amp applications. Which, if you're thinking, boy, maybe I want something bigger like that. Honestly, I thought it was just a little bit bigger than this one. I didn't realize it was that big. If you're thinking about that, really start thinking about 24 volts or 48 volts. This system right here, trying to, whatever, this one, it is at the higher end of what I would really recommend for doing a, a uh, 12 volt system. And then the other thing we got going on here is, uh, I've been using this little 2000 multi plus as a battery charger. I've been charging these up really slowly along with uh, this little guy right here. And as you can see, we're, oh, we just went from one to 0.3 amps. I'm trying to charge them up really slow basically to pre-balance them. The SOK batteries and pretty much every lithium battery that sits on a pallet on a ship for a number of months to maybe even a year, it's gonna have cell imbalances. And I'll probably do a video on this later, but you wanna charge them up really slow. Um, or not charge them up really slow, but let them sit on a higher voltage at a really low amps for a couple of days and that'll balance them out and then they'll be ready to use. I've been at Chatterbox today. Uh, this is enough uh, talking about this. I need to get this board cut, get some carpet on it. We're going to get laying it out, and uh, we will check in when we've got something to show. Stick around. Oh, w while you wait, uh, give us a subscription. I would love uh, your subs subscribing. I would love for you to subscribe, specifically you. I would love to have you along for the ride. And uh, if you've already subscribed, go ahead and give us a thumb. You know, give us a thumbs up feeds the algorithm as they say. All right, we'll check you later. Well, good morning, everybody. We are back at work here, and this is how far we've come on the board. Uh, quick note, I did uh, made a little boo-boo. I started with a 24 by 48 inch board right here, and thought better about it, and I thought, you know what, let's make sure we have enough room to put this bottom raceway. I'm a little out of practice, so we went with a 28 inch. Uh, 28 by 48. I think that's a good uh, ratio in, with this type of layout. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to note here is, uh, well, mostly on the multi-plus here. I was just thinking that it's important that you can swap this out if you need to. 
and we got Zuki here. He he really wants to show us this ball that he has. Hey, Zook, can I have it? Ah, all right, go get it, boy. There he goes. He gone. Bears over there under the bears under the truck, and Zuki's coming back. Anyway, so uh, you want to make sure that you can replace this, and the way these are held on is with this cleat here. So you can just slide it right on. But you wanna make sure you have enough room inside your board dimensions, or I try to, so that this can be pulled up. And so I'm right about there. Be thinking about that. You don't wanna line this up with the very top of where your ceiling of your uh, compartment may be or anything like that. You wanna be able to pull this off if you were to have to. Uh, I like to leave a little room up here too, whenever possible, to let uh, these fins cool themselves. The one thing I really like about the raceway is even though, you know, you put all these covers on here, you know, stuff like, like this, you might think, oh, there's not a lot of room to breathe. Well, there's still plenty of room to breathe because all of this air is airflow through here. So it can suck air through here and exit it out here. I'm not too worried about that. These, they get really hot, but they still perform pretty well. Even like the, there's a lot of thermal overhead in them. Hey bear, what's up? Okay, bud. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, we're just putting this together. We got that uh, this big old disconnect here again. Got this uh, wired up for the most part. Uh, again, well, the other thing I want to mention is doing a little bit of hot glue to hold these VE Direct cables in there. We do that on all the things. Uh, the reason for that is just so that they don't... Well, this one came loose a little bit, it looks like. Uh, bear, this isn't about you. <laughs> uh, just to make sure that they don't come out while in transit. So anyway, I got to get back at it. All right, been uh, hard at work here once again. Uh, you'll notice a couple little changes, hopefully. Um, got all the wiring put together and just got done doing the programming. In fact, last little thing was doing the GUI mods on here. We're still doing that. Still love that. Um, so I think we are about ready to uh, put some covers on here and get it into the fifth wheel. Hopefully the wind's not too bad, but uh, it's about that time. Let's do an update. Been hard at work at this for the last couple of days off and on. Had uh, a couple of people stop by the shop, other things to take care of. So it's taking a little bit longer than I planned, but anyway, let's check in on our progress, huh? All right, we've got our batteries in here. I wouldn't call them installed yet, but they are here. Uh, we've got them going into our switch. And uh, a, a word on the batteries here real quick. Uh, to, the, to anybody who's saying, uh, I don't know, you know, maybe you should be running these to a common bus bar, which is not a bad idea. That's what the Lynx Power In is for. And uh, th there's an argument to be made that maybe that should be done here. But I thought it was interesting. I checked on the... Uh, SOK BMSs through the Bluetooth app. Each of these were taking 29 amps each. 29 point something or so. Which is pretty darn close to 120 if you add up, you know, 29, 29, 29, or 29.5, whatever that was. That's pretty much what that's putting out. Which means the power was being distributed equally between all those batteries. Can't get much better than that. Okay, enough about that. Uh, we got our board here. We use some uh, angle aluminum up there to secure that to the uh, framing and secured it to the back wall. Uh, I don't think there's a lot to note here other than I got my AC mains run, all that fun stuff. Don't have the solar wires run yet. That's what's coming up next. Let's uh, see where all those wires go. That's where there's some real fun. So we're running up here, then over through here, and uh, yeah, the uh, again the the solar is going to come out one of those vent tubes there. We'll get to that. So we go up here into this area, and I do have this working. I made my mains connections here. This is pretty much how I do it here. I use these aluminum splices. 
and then I wrap it in heat shrink. And that's how I splice. This is the cable that used to come out of this box and I splice that into the MultiPlus in. And then the uh, output of the MultiPlus comes into here. And you just land those connections right where they used to be. And everything works. Now I've done, uh, oh, the other thing. So servo display, we're doing the bigger one here. Uh, this is the seven inch, nice and beautiful. There is a challenge with running the seven inch though. Uh, of course you can see there's GUI mods on there, like always. And that, the challenge is, uh, if you run the power through the USB power cable from the servo, it doesn't work very well with these larger screens. Now, actually, I'm going to show you exactly what happens. See if it'll misbehave for us here. There it goes. See how the brightness kind of comes and goes? That's basically the servo. I think it's resetting its power. That's what happens. If you ever see this on a system, it's because the servo can't output the power to the screen. So, how you solve that is you wire in a 12 volt to USB. And this is just one of those marine dongles there on Amazon. And then I plug uh, the USB connection from the servo display into it. And wouldn't you know it, it doesn't flash anymore. Uh-huh. Now, as far as how, is it, how I hooked that up, I uh, connected it to an open port on the uh, fuse, the main uh, DC distribution panel for the fifth wheel itself. And then I just hit the ground lug here to give it ground. And that, that is it. Just that easy. Then I'll usually tape this up so it doesn't come disconnected. And then just tuck it back there neatly with the rest of the wires. Neatly is kind of a relative term because nothing back there is neat. Well, anyway, I'm gonna get all this buttoned up, cleaned up a little bit, and then I'm gonna get to work on the solar. Oh, almost forgot uh, another thing. Um, a lot of people always ask, what do you do with the built-in power converters on these? This is what typically charges the batteries. And usually there's a plug just like this that plugs into the back of here somewhere. There's the plug. You just disconnect it. And as it just so happened, this disconnected when I pulled this out and I will just not be reconnecting it because the MultiPlus serves that function now and it does a much better job. You know, boys, this wouldn't be taking so long if I could get some help around here. If you two jokers weren't lying down on the job all the time, chasing balls, you guys, no treats. Oh, am I kidding? You're going to get treats later. Another day here up on the uh, RV roof, getting the solar put on this. We're going to try and get 10 panels on here for 2,000 watts. I know, uh, I think in the intro to the video, we talked about 1,600 watts. Talked with the customer. I think we can get a little bit more. And uh, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't cost that much more. The way we do it, uh, we pretty much have a flat fee for putting solar on a roof whether it be 1200 watts, 1600 watts, or 3000 watts. The way we look at it, the more solar, the better. We do make a little bit on the panels, so you know, don't, don't worry about us, we're doing all right. But ultimately, I would rather the customer be happier because they're gonna be happier with more power. And uh, that's good for everybody. Okay, so the real thing I wanna talk about was uh, here's how we're coming up through these vents. And I wasn't sure which one it would come up at, so I opened up on either side, basically. Um, I think we're okay here. I'm a little, it definitely makes me a little bit nervous. I'm like, oh boy, I don't want these to fall down. And I've started to seal them up down below too. We'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, okay, but what I really wanna talk about was the way I figure out which sets of wires go to what. I do tape them together first. That way I know at least my pairs. But then what I'll do is I'll put ends on one of these sets and then connect it to a panel, go down, and with a voltmeter, check basically which pairs have power and what the polarity is, and then I'll hook it up according to that. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. So I already got one hooked up there. Now I'm going to do the other one. And uh, just what I do, just take a voltmeter here and uh, put the probes on either side, and whatever this 
positive is positive. Remember which one that is. Um, maybe trim off the other one first, the negative, and then feed it up in there, trim off the other one, and then uh, you're good to go. So just turn that one on and we are making power. See, we're in bulk there. We're in, well, I guess we're in bulk in both of them, but one's on, one's not. All right, here's what we're looking at for solar output right now. Out of 1,600 watts, 1,520. That's really good, or no, that's, yeah, it's 1,520. We're still going up a little bit. We're about 10 minutes, 10, 20 minutes away from solar noon here. Oh, I think we just had a little, little tick of edge of cloud. So it's a perfect time for solar. You're gonna find this on your solar systems. Uh, this is the time of year when solar is at its best. Sun is pretty high in the sky, relatively, relatively, but the temperatures are cold. Temperature affects solar quite a bit. Uh, so you got cool temps, it's like 50 right now. Uh, but at this time, past the summer solstice, uh, to get the same sun, it'd probably be like 70 or 80 right now. So that's why you get so much better solar in the spring than you do in the summer and fall. Got everything wired up, not secured yet. Let's just quickly review what uh, the work I've done. So um, I've got all these panels, uh, 10 of them, in uh, two pairs of two. These are the 45 volt VOC panels. So that means we're running, uh, by the time the solar charger does its stuff, we're running in the high 70s, low 80s volts on these, which means uh, you can put more panels in parallel. So we're doing two groups. Uh, series, two, these two in series, then these two back in series, then these two in series, and then those two in series. And pretty much they're all in, this is one group going to one controller in parallel. This is another group in uh, all these going to another controller. And the reason why I did that was because I figured, well, if we get shade here, well then, you know, that air conditioner is going to knock down this. So we're gonna have the same shade over there. So I want this whole section to be affected the same and that way this one can work most efficiently. All right, that's my thought process behind that. Uh, and then I'm going to get these secured down and I feel like I talk about it a lot, but I'm just gonna talk about it again. These are the fasteners I use, number 14, one inch metal roofing screw. Kinda of like the ones that you use on a building like that. It's got a rubber grommet on there, a lot of tooth to bite into this roof. It's not going anywhere. Unlike the garbage that comes with the kits, don't use that stuff. Then I do die core underneath the bracket, in the hole, then on top of the bracket, on top of the fastener, good to go. Then uh, clean up all my wires, put the cap back on there. I think I gotta do a little bit of trimming right here to get that to lay down nice for me. Then just clean up the rest of it and we'll call this thing done today. All right, I think uh, it's probably one of the last times I'll be on this roof. Unless there's something unforeseen happens. Got everything uh, looking a lot better. Oh boy, it, it feels like a twister out here, Jeez. Oh my gosh, we gotta figure something out. Um, but yeah, you can see it's all secured down. And whenever I'm doing multiple panels like this, I like to overlap the brackets. That way I only have one set of holes there and uh, I get die core in between each layer. Hasn't been a problem yet. All right, uh, let's get down. And we got a couple more things to do and then we are about done. All right, uh, day has turned to night here. I had uh, an event I needed to do at 10-2, uh, beer league playoff hockey, if anybody wants to know. And we won, so it's good. Um, I'm working on the uh, covering for these and how we're going to secure these batteries down. It's kind of a two-in-one deal. You'll see it when it's done. But before I did that, I wanted to do a uh, basically a heat soak test. So what I'm going to do is run a high load on this for a while. And we're going to basically see what, uh, what heats up and what doesn't using our FLIR camera. So... Uh, step one, we're going to let it basically run a high amp load for a while, and then we'll come and check on it. I'll show you that load here in a moment. Little space heater here running on high. I'll show you exactly how many watts it's pulling. 
All right, not so much watts as uh, amps, I guess. So we're gonna be we're pulling about 136 amps. That's pretty close to an air conditioner. So um, we'll run that for a little bit while I put together the battery stuff. All right, uh, it's been running here for a little bit. I'd say probably about 10 minutes. And just like on times before, the hottest parts are the, uh, well, the inverter up here. Let's see, where are we getting at? Oh, actually, that's not that warm. 68 degrees. It's about, it's getting a little cooler out here. So it's not a ton of heat building, to be honest, there. Uh, let's see, what's the ambient? 47, okay. So it's pretty cool. But kind of like I figured that one of the hottest parts is what here? What's this right here? We're up to 83 here. Where's that? That's weird because I don't... I'm trying to find where that heat is. Huh. Uh, but then this main lug here, this is for the inverter. And I would expect that line and fuse to be somewhat warmer. And it is, it's in the 80s, not horrible. And then the other thing is the uh, disconnect here. We're at 80, we're at 80 there on the negative. It's not really all that warm at all. And that's pretty good. Your shunts will get a little bit warm too because they are a point of resistance. But all my battery connections here are looking okay. So the warmest we're getting is in the 60s there. So I'm okay with this for the most part, or not for the most part, for all of it. Interesting that the servo is getting warm, huh? I didn't think those got all that warm, but sure enough, they do. And then I like to make sure that these connections here on the MultiPlus are good. Oh, I know why. They're reflective. That's why those don't show anything sometimes. I'll just feel it. Yeah, these are good. All right, back to uh, real view. I'm confident that with what I've seen here, I'd run this all day. I think I'm ready to button all this back up. All right, so this is what I did for the battery encasement here. Just uh, um, some carpeted board over top, uh, pressing all the connections down. Got uh, some angle aluminum here, keeping the batteries from moving this way. And I mean, I feel like I'm moving the trailer there. Uh, so they're not going anywhere. <clears throat> and then I got it secured there and then I just screwed them down right through there. And that way they can set some stuff on there don't have to worry about anything. Plenty of usable storage here. Uh, we, that's 824 amp hours right there. Can you imagine if that were Battleborns, they'd be all the way across there. Love these new batteries that are in different shapes and sizes. And there's plenty of other companies out there too we're playing around with. But anyway, I'm getting off track. Got this all buttoned back up. That's how we ran our, our conduit through there and up into there. And then uh, one last look at how we did the screen. Looks good, looks good. Well, I think that'll about do it. Uh, it's getting late here. I gotta edit this video down and you're gonna see it tomorrow morning. That's right, we don't do, uh, sometimes we have them in the can ready to go, but uh, not this time, it's busy. So uh, if you like what you're seeing, give us a subscription, we'd love that. We'd love to have you along. Uh, leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Um, again, we do this for a living, sotasolar.com, S-O-T-A-S-O-L-A-R.com. Uh, from all of us, Sean, that's me, JD down in Arizona, he's coming up here soon. Uh, sometimes my kids help out, Levi and Austin, and sometimes Millie, sometimes Lucy. Uh, my wife, Jen, running the books, keeping everything, uh, keeping us legal and all that stuff. Um, from all of us, thank you. We appreciate you watching. And uh, catch you next time.